Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jersey Zone. Today, I want to do my 2023-2024 standings predictions. Now, of course, like every year, I'm probably going to be very off on these predictions, but that is kind of the fun of it, right? You know, to look back at the end of the year and go, wow, I was completely wrong on all of these teams. So yeah, if you guys disagree with me, that's completely okay. And yeah, this is just for fun. Now, unlike previous years, I'm not going to split this into four different videos for each division. I'm just going to make it all in one go here. So that means we're probably going to have to go pretty fast. So before we do jump into it, it. If you guys are new to the channel and you like hockey content, please make sure to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's start off with the Atlantic. I feel like this division is a lot more competitive this year. It used to be just Toronto, Boston, and Tampa really at the top of the standings there and kind of dominating. Florida was in there as well, but the bottom seeded teams were kind of pretty far out. This year, I feel like the top seeded teams kind of got a little bit worse and the bottom teams just got better. So I feel like it's a little bit more even this time around. That being said, I do still have the Montreal Canadiens coming in at eighth place in this division. I know they had a lot of injuries last year, but I still don't really see them climbing up the standings. I kind of still have them looking for that lottery pick. At number seven, I have the Detroit Red Wings. I know a couple people really did not like their additions this offseason. I didn't mind them personally, and I think the Debrinkit ad is obviously a very good one for them. However, I still don't really see them coming out of seventh place. Moving on to number six, I have the Ottawa Senators. They do have a really solid top six with Stutzla, Kachuk, Giroux, and the addition of Tarasenko as well, but they also have added Corpus Salo, who I'm kind of iffy on, to be honest. He has his up seasons. He has his down seasons. Last year, he was very good. So if he can kind of continue that, I could see Ottawa, you know, kind of moving up in the standings here. But for now, I have them in sixth place. With number five of the Buffalo Sabres, I know the Sabres are kind of the hot pick right now to make the playoffs. Unfortunately, I do not have them making it. I know they got some really good young talent with Cousins, Darlene, and Owen Power. Obviously, Thompson has been like dominating the league for the past couple of seasons here. I just don't know if I love their bottom six. I am interested to see how Devin Levi does this season. I'm assuming they're going to try and play him a little bit more often, so he could be the one that really brings Buffalo into the playoffs this year, or he could hurt them. We'll kind of have to see. I mean, he is a very young goaltender, so you kind of never know. Moving on to number four, I have the Boston Bruins, and I do have them making the playoffs as well, even though they lost Bergeron and Krejci and are kind of replacing them with Zaka and Coyle, and I don't think they'll be as motivated this year, they're still a very good team. When you have Marshawn and Pasternak and McAvoy and Allmark and Swayman, like, I don't think those goaltenders are going to be as good as they were last year. I don't think that they're going to win the Jennings, but they're still a pretty good goaltending tandem. I like the addition of JVR. I think that is a good one, but yeah, I just have a hard time seeing Boston completely fall out of the playoffs after last season. At number three, I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. I feel like they done a pretty decent job at replacing the depth that they've lost, like at least as best as they can. However, of course, I kind of have them here because of the Vasilevsky injury. He is supposed to miss the first two months of the season, so we'll see what Tampa is going to do with their goaltending because they really do need to do something. They can't go into the season without doing anything, so maybe they'll try and pick someone up on waivers like a Martin Jones or trade for someone like a Dan Vladar. Then at number two, I have the Florida Panthers. I know that they just snuck into the playoffs last year, basically on the back of Alex Lyon, and then they moved from his back to the backs of Bobrovsky and Kachuk to make it to the finals, but I still feel like they are a pretty good team. You know, when you have guys like Barkov and Verhage, and like I said, Kachuk, I know that they have some injuries on D right now with uh, Montour and Ekblad being out to start the season. That is probably my main concern with them, so we'll see how long it kind of takes for them to come back and then get in the swing of things as well. And also, I guess my other main concern is Bobrovsky. He is kind of a hit or miss goaltender. Obviously, in the playoffs, he was definitely a hit, but during the regular season, he was a little bit of a miss, but I'm kind of thinking that he could ride that momentum from those playoffs into this regular season here. And at number one, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, we know that the Leafs have been a good regular season team for basically the past couple of seasons. It's really when it comes to the playoffs where you have your concerns. Now, I do want to quickly talk about Klingberg here because I have seen some other fan bases kind of bash this pickup for the Leafs. Honestly, I like it quite a bit. The main reason for that is because I've talked about this a decent amount in my live streams last season where the Leafs basically get no offense from their back end, or at least they have a very, very hard time getting goals from their back end and I feel like Klingberg can maybe help that out you know especially in the playoffs as well we saw that last season in their last seven games in the playoffs they only scored two goals so they need to find some sort of secondary scoring there and hopefully Klingberg can kind of help that out but let's move on to the Metro Division in eighth place I have the Philadelphia Flyers I feel like this one is a pretty easy pick for last place don't really see a ton going for them with seventh place I have the Columbus Blue Jackets I do like a couple of the additions for them on the back end until he seems like he's going to be a very good pick for them but I just just don't really see a ton of depth up front and their goaltending is a very big question mark for me with Merzlikens and Martin. Can they bounce back from the seasons that they had last year? Next at number six, I have the New York Islanders. Yes,
Yes, they have a fantastic goaltending tandem and great defense as well, but they just have no scoring, man. Even with the addition of Bor Horvat, who had a career year last year in Vancouver, the second that he came over to the island, his totals fell off a cliff and just like washed into the ocean. Now, maybe a full year with Barzell will kind of help that out, but... I don't really see it a whole lot. They're just a team that's built and coached for low scoring games, which I don't know if it overly works in the regular season. It definitely does in the playoffs. So if they can get there, I could see them going far, but I just don't have them making it. At number five, I have the Washington Capitals. I think they'll be fairly competitive this year. I mean, they still have the core of Ovechkin, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, Carlson, and Kemper. So I think they'll be pretty okay. Of course, Kuznetsov is asking for a trade out. So maybe if they aren't making the playoffs or if it doesn't look like they will make the playoffs, by the trade deadline, hopefully they can find a partner to trade him out. The main thing that really interests me about the Capitals this year is Max Pacioretty because, of course, he did sign with the Capitals. However, at this point, there is no timeline for his return, and I feel like if he could return and be healthy for a good portion of this year for the Capitals, I could see them making the playoffs, honestly. He is a very good player when he's healthy. However, he's basically never healthy. Like, I think he missed 77 games last year, which really does suck a lot, so I am hoping that Pacioretty can kind of get healthy this season and hopefully play for at least, you know, maybe 40 to 50 games. Moving on to number four, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I do have them in my second wildcard spot in the Eastern Conference. I like some of their additions with Riley Smith and Carlson. Now, I don't think Carlson is going to have as good of a year as he did last year, but he is going to be playing with Malkin and Crosby, so honestly, maybe he will. We'll kind of have to see. My two main concerns with Pittsburgh is how old they are, but at the same time, it doesn't really look like Crosby, Malkin, or Latang are slowing down a whole bunch, so maybe that won't be a huge huge issue. The other concern that I have is their goaltending though. I'm just not really that big of a fan of Jari, at least as a starting goaltender, so I don't love that, especially with his extension this year. With Nedeljkovic though, I think that could be a little bit better for them. Nedeljkovic was really good in Carolina, and then he had two bad seasons in Detroit. Now, of course, Detroit isn't really that good of a team, so maybe he'll have a bounce back year with the Penguins. Then at number three, I have the New Jersey Devils. I could see them kind of having a little bit of a sophomore slump in a way where they won't be as fantastic as they were last year. They'll take a few steps back, but they'll still be very, very good. That being said, though, they did sign Timo Meyer, so they will have a full year of him, so maybe I'm completely wrong. At number two, I have the New York Rangers. I think they are a very fun team. I like their additions of Blake Wheeler and Jonathan Quick as kind of veteran signings there, and, you know, they still have very good defense and one of the best goaltenders in the world in Igor Sesterkin, so I think they'll be pretty good. And at number one, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. They're just such a well-rounded group. They have a great 1A, 1B in Anderson and Rand and of course, when one of them gets injured, because they eventually do, they have Kachekov to back them up. They have a fantastic defense, some pretty good forwards as well. I'm really interested to see exactly how Michael Bunting kind of meshes with this forward group. I think that is going to be pretty fun to see. Then let's go on to the Central Division. In eighth place, I have the Chicago Blackhawks. Really, the only chance they have to make it out of eighth place is Connor Bedard. In seventh, I have the Arizona Coyotes. They have a couple of decent additions during the offseason here, like Matt Dumba and Sean Dursey. Logan Cooley is looking really good in the preseason, but I still see them looking for that lottery pick. Number six, I have the St. Louis Blues. I don't really see them progressing a whole lot. Honestly, I could see them having pretty much the same season as last, where they kind of look to sell off some guys at the trade deadline. At number five, I have the Nashville Predators. They made some interesting moves during the offseason with buying out Matt Duchesne, bringing in Ryan O'Reilly and Luke Shen. The main concern that I really have with them is their forward group. It's super shallow up there, man. They don't have a ton going on. I think they only have like four guys making over $2 million up front, which is kind of crazy. Their back end and goaltending is really good, but yeah, I just, I don't love their forward group. Moving on to number four, I have the Winnipeg Jets. I really do like the Dubois trade for them, getting Ayafalo and Velarde. I think that was great. Hollabuck is still one of the best goaltenders in the league right now. I think that this team could be pretty good, but I just don't quite have them making the playoffs. At number three, I have the Minnesota Minnesota Wild. They are going to be a pretty good team this year, but I feel like we have this conversation almost every single year where, you know, the Wild are going to be a pretty good team. They may get into the playoffs, but they just can't find their way out of the first round. And it reminds me a little bit of another team that kind of has a Leaf logo in a way. But yeah, either way, the Wild have not made it out of the first round since 2016. I'm really rooting for them. I hope that they can kind of break through that barrier. Moving on to number two, I have the Dallas Stars. I feel like they are a very solid team this year. They got Duchesne at a steal. They have great young players in Robertson, Johnston, and like even Heiskanen, who doesn't really feel like he's that young anymore, but I think he's only like 24. Ottinger as well. Of course, he didn't have a great playoffs, but you know, at the same time, that was coming off of like an amazing playoffs against Calgary the year before. So, you know, he did.
did have very high expectations. I think Ottinger will bounce back a little bit here, but yeah, I think Dallas is a very good team right now. But of course, at number one, I do have the Colorado Avalanche. Even without Lana Skog, they're just such a good team, man. They're so well balanced. They have such good depth. They're just, they're good at everything. It's just the Avalanche, so I'm not going to be surprised if they do win the division this year. And finally, we're on to the Pacific Division. I feel like this one was kind of the hardest to choose for me, at least in terms of the middle teams. I feel like the top two teams were pretty easy. The bottom two teams were pretty easy, but three to six, I really struggled with, honestly. At number eight, though, of course, I do have the San Jose Sharks. Don't think I'm going to get any backlash there. We know that San Jose is going to be that lottery team and honestly might be the worst team in the league. At number seven, I have the Anaheim Ducks. It's good that they got the Zegras and Drysdale deals done. That's kind of hard to say, but yeah, I, I just don't really see them being very good this year either. But here is really where I started to struggle because at number six, I had the Vancouver Canucks. I wanted to put them higher. I really did. I feel like I'm one of the few Leaf fans that does actually like Vancouver, but you know, outside of Hughes and Pedersen and Besser and Demko, I just don't really see a ton of talent there. I guess, you know, you could put JT Miller in there as well, but I just don't see a ton of depth with Vancouver, and that is my main concern with them. So that is why I have them at sixth. At number five of the Seattle Kraken, and I do have them taking a wildcard spot as well. Honestly, they're just such a well-balanced team. I mean, it was brought up a ton during last season, especially during the playoffs that, you know, they don't have a star player, but they're a very score by committee team, and that's just kind of how they're built. And honestly, I can see them continuing that this season as well and just making it into a wildcard position. With number four, I have the LA Kings, and I do have them taking that other wildcard spot ahead of the Seattle Kraken. Now, even though I do feel like the Jets got the better end of that Dubois trade, you're still getting Pierre-Luc Dubois, who can be a very good player if he wants to play where he's currently playing, and I think he'll be happy in LA, so I don't think that is going to be an issue for them. My main concern with the Kings is their goaltending with Talbot and Copley. Even though Copley was kind of that shining light for the Kings last season in net, I'm not quite too sure if he can replicate it, so I would love to see the Kings try and upgrade in goal. Moving on to number three, I have the Calgary Flames. Now, they had a disastrous year last year. Markstrom was awful. Huberto had a huge drop off in points. The players hated the coach, and they had 17 overtime loss points, and they still almost made the playoffs, only missing by three points. And that's kind of why I have the Flames making the playoffs. They just need a couple of players to bounce back, specifically with Markstrom. He just needs to be semi-competent, and I think the Flames will be fine. Plus, the Flames usually do have a good season, then a bad season, followed by a good season. So I think, you know, it's kind of time for them to have another good season here. At number two, I have the Vegas Golden Knights. They didn't really lose a whole bunch in the offseason here. Basically, only Riley Smith. They did sign Aiden Hill to a pretty big contract, and I do like Aiden Hill. Like, I liked him before these playoffs, but that is kind of a lot for Hill, at least in my mind, but maybe he'll continue to play up to that. We'll kind of have to see. Either way, I think the Vegas Golden Knights are kind of going to chill a little bit until the playoffs come along, and that's why I have them at number two. Meaning at number one, I have the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, it's McDavid and Dreisaitl. I don't really think I need to say much more. Now, the one new player to the Oilers that I'm very interested in watching is actually Connor Brown. Now, he's been injured quite a bit over the past couple of seasons, especially last year, but I feel like if he could be healthy this year, he could put up a ton of points, especially if he plays with McDavid. Now, of course, everybody playing with McDavid is going to put up a ton of points, but I feel like with Brown specifically, he's kind of like a little bit of a Zach Hyman in a way where he just complements those top players so well. He's very hardworking. He fetches the pucks out of the corner and can really free up space for those top guys. So that is the one player that I'm really going to be watching this year for the Oilers. So those are my standings predictions. I might as well give you guys my finals and my cup winner as well. So for my finals, I have the Dallas Stars and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a homer pick, but just let me have it. So the cup winner though, I have the Dallas Stars. I do think that they are going to win the cup this year. I just really like their team a lot. Their forward group is great. Defense and goaltending, they're just an extremely solid team. So that is my Stanley Cup winner. But I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on all of my social medias, links down below. But like I said, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.